All right, we're going to add a little bit more visual spice to our uh, our hurt floors here. So uh, what we want to do is open up our hurt floor prefab. So we're going to you know go to that and resources and open that guy up. I'm actually going to redock my scene view here. Not sure why it wasn't docked to begin with. Uh, oh, maybe that's why. Uh, anyways, so uh, yeah, we're going to open up that prefab editor. And what we're going to also do is go to our prefabs folder and look for that bonus folder. And we're going to drag and drop that right onto our hurt floor. So what this is, is it's going to be a particle effect that plays for us. We do want to make sure when we drop that on the hurt floor that we go to our transform component and set all three of these position values to zero. Um, and then with it selected, there's this little particle effect uh, window that appears at the bottom of our scene view. If you hit play, we can see that particle effect play. And what this is, is like a little, uh, it's like a explosion type particle, just a little burst of color coming out of our... Uh, our object here, so, uh, or our, I guess I should say our hurt floor. Um, so one thing you'll notice though, is it starts with the default color of white. Um, that's, uh, I mean, you know, it, it gets the effect across, but it doesn't quite look the way we'd like it to. Um, so what we wanna do is first, before we affect the size and shape of this thing, we wanna, we wanna change the color. So if we click on this option down here that says color over lifetime, there's this, uh, there's this white bar we can click on and then it'll pull up what's called the gradient editor. And what this is, is this allows us to pick uh, two colors that the, the, the thing will fade between. So it'll start with the color on this left end and end with the color on this right end. Uh, now what we wanna do is uh, we want to grab those colors from our hurt floor material. So we have the emission color we picked, if you did the emission step, uh, and the albedo color. Now you could actually pick any two colors you want here, but I think picking these two is going to look quite nice. So what we wanna do is click on, or I'm sorry, not that one, color over lifetime and click on this thing. Um, and we wanna try to get a hold of that material color. So I think if we lock our inspector here, this might be our best bet. Um, oh, actually, I know what we can do. We can unlock the inspector. I think we can dock. Oh, we can't dock this. Okay, well, what we'll do instead is we'll get as close to we, as we can to that color value. Um, or <clears throat> actually, what we can do to make sure we get it exactly is click on our, uh, our hurt floor here, go to the material and open the admission. And you'll see, uh, oh, there should be a, Maybe there's not. Um, I thought there'd be a hex code value, but I, I'm surprised to see that there isn't, but that's okay. What we'll do is we'll copy these three values over. So we have zero, 59, and 104. So I'll go to my hurt floor particle, click on color over lifetime, and on this one, we'll enter in, and we'll say zero, 59, and 104. There we go, that matches us to our, our first color there. And then we'll go back to the hurt floor again, select this color and we'll see that it's just 255 and 12 for green. So we'll go in and, oh, it looks like that color didn't save for some reason. So that was uh, zero, uh, 54 and uh, 109, I think. Yeah, something like that. If it's not exact, it's okay. But, but you know, we're just trying to make it as close as we can here. Um, and then this one is just straight red. So we'll double click on that and we'll set, I think this one's 12 on green and then zero for blue. Right, there we go, hit enter there. Now we've got our gradient looking nice here. Uh, and if we click on our floor particle, we'll see that updated. And now you'll see if we, if we play that particle effect that it starts that dark blue. It's a little hard to see it because it's kind of quick here. Here, we'll slow it down. We'll change this playback speed to 0.25. You'll see when that finally plays, here after about a second or so, it starts blue and then slowly shifts over to our red color. Um, there we go. Change that playback speed back to one and we'll hit stop. Um, one thing we do want to do though is, is this thing's pretty big. So we want to, um, we probably want to scale it down quite a bit. Um, so we're going to go to, I think it's this, uh, let's see. Velocity over lifetime. Actually, let's see what happens if we just scale this thing down. So we're gonna, we're gonna hit play and get a, a feel for how big it is now. So if we hit the scale gizmo by pressing R and drag this white box and really drag it all the way over there so it gets real small. Um, looks like that actually doesn't have too much of an effect. Uh, well, maybe it does. 
I don't know. We'll, we'll make it extremely small and see what happens. Let's see what's our scale at, 0 0.05. Yeah, so it doesn't look like scale has an effect. So what we'll do is we will change our, um, I guess, our um, velocity over lifetime. And that's what we want. So if we make this 10 and then this 1, how does that look? Yeah, it's a little bit smaller there. Uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give that a, a linear velocity or a velocity over lifetime of 10 in the linear X and one in the linear X. And that will just make it so it doesn't blast so high up in the air. The particles are still a little big, but I think that that's okay. Um, I'm all right with them being a little bit bigger than, uh, than that. So that's, that's totally fine by me. Um, so what we need to do now is actually go into our hurt floor and we need to open up that script. And what we need to do is uh, say particle system array particles. And then we need to add our start method. So we're gonna say void start here, uh, private void start. Make sure you add that private there if it's not there already. Um, and what we're gonna say is particles is equal to get components with an S, components in children, and then our angle brackets particle system and then open close parentheses and the semicolon. And what that's going to do is it's going to get all of our particles that we make. So in our prefab, we're only going to have one. Uh, but when you actually add it to your scene, uh, you're going to want to be able to add more depending on how big your particle or your, your hurt floor is. So for example, like in my level two, I have just such massive hurt floors that, uh, you know, I'm going to want to have multiple of these hurt particles playing, and we're going to play them, select them at random every second or, or every few seconds or so, uh, just to spurt out a little bit, kind of like uh, lava and what you might be used to in like Minecraft, where they kind of spit out a particle every now and then. Um, that's kind of what we're going for here. So, uh, yeah, we want to say, um, yeah, get get all those particles from uh, our get component and children, and then we're going to drop down below that and say void update. And we're going to say, uh, well, let's add a public public float um, particle play time. We're going to set that equal to five. So every every uh, five seconds, we want to um, to trigger that to happen. And then down here, we're going to say uh, uh, time to play float time to play down there. Um, so what we'll say here is float time to, or not float time to play, we'll just say time to play is equal to time dot time plus particle play time. So that means in, that will, uh, this value will now be set to uh, five seconds after we start our game. And then we'll say if time dot time is greater than time to play. So that means if, or greater than or equal to, we should say. Uh, that means that if our current in-game time has passed that five second period, what we want to do is make time to play equal to time dot time plus particle time, particle play time. So uh, that'll reset our time to play to now be five seconds later from when we're playing our particle here. Now what we're going to do is say particles and then in square brackets, we're going to say random dot range zero comma uh, particles dot length and then outside of the square brackets we're just going to say play and add our open and close parentheses and then uh that's actually it that that will handle making it so that this updates every time every time our time exceeds our thing we'll, we'll increase uh the time until our next play and then we'll play one of the particles at random that's currently a child of our object so if the, in the case that we only have one particle then it'll just play that one always but otherwise we'll pick from a random uh, array of the ones that we have uh, as a child of our prefab. So if I were to go back and select my hurt floors here, um, you know, I only have one and it's, you know, located in the middle and that's fine, but we probably want to have a few more. So um, I'm going to just use controller command D and duplicate that and just kind of move them around, find a cool, uh, you know, position for those to sit. I think that looks cool. Uh, maybe we'll do f like f five or six or seven. Uh, just grab a few of them like that. 
There we go. And then same thing with this one up here. I'll select that, go in my hurt, find where my hurt particle is, move it around and duplicate it and add a few. And again, these are only gonna play every five seconds or so, but um, that's totally fine. Uh, we'd rather not have these things popping all the time. And now if I were to hit play and go around, you'll see, oh, it played a couple there. There's one that played. Let's see, wait for another one here. There's one that played. So yeah, just every now and then you'll get like a little bit of a pop from the, the hurt floor just to remind you that there's a, you know, there's bad stuff in there and you'd, you'd rather not touch it. See, there it is. And if I swing up to this upper one here, oops, <laughs> saved it there. As I swing up here, you'll see, there we go, there's one pop. Let's see if we can see another one up here before I call it. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it plays it plays one of them at random and it, uh, you know, it just it, just like the glowing emissive material and the, and the multicolored nature of that, it gives us uh, just a little bit more to look at while we're playing and uh, and to see that, you know, this 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 ground floor here, this hurt floor is, uh, is in fact a bad thing and we don't want to touch it. Um, once you've got that finished up, make sure you save your scene, of course. Um, anywhere that you add these, you know, you want to make sure that we're saving and, and keeping all that, those changes that we've made. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it.